Pennsylvania has historically had absentee ballots for those who are unable to go to their polling place on election day because their duties, profession, or occupation requires them to be out of the municipality or because of illness or physical disability. And that has remained in place and continues in place. In addition to that, our legislators and governor created Act 77 of 2019, which creates a new category called a mail-in ballot. And a mail-in ballot is for anybody who's not eligible for an absentee ballot that they can request a ballot by mail. It looks very similar to an absentee ballot, except it says mail-in ballot. They request it in writing. The County Board of Elections mails them the ballot. They fill it out and they either mail it back and have it in our hands by 8 p.m. election night or they um, personally deliver it to the County Board of Elections prior to 8 p.m. election night. Well, the Act 77 is about 55 pages. There's lots of things included in Act 77, but particularly in regard to the mail-in ballots, it creates an opportunity for voters who simply would prefer not to go to their polling place, not to need to make time in their day to go to a polling place, to request a mail-in ballot. And they can also request that they be on the permanent mail ballot list, which means that they would get an application at the beginning of each calendar year in February. and that application would be good for a full calendar year and we would uh, then mail them a ballot in the primary and mail them a ballot for the November election. In order to apply for an absentee or a mail-in ballot, voters can either fill out a paper application and mail it to the County Board of Elections. They can obtain that application from us in person. They can also obtain that application from our website in a printable version and mail it in. Or they can go to votespa.com and there is a nice little utility the Department of State has built to help direct the voters to the correct product, either an absentee ballot or a mail-in ballot. I should mention in the regard to the online application, it only works for individuals with a Pennsylvania ID product, either a state-issued driver's license or a state non-driver voter ID card, because that card is needed in order to uh, pull your signature from your PennDOT file. Well, the Department of State's uh, question, series of questions will ultimately can help solve that problem for those applying online. For those looking at a paper application, the question is if you are going to be out of your municipality on election day due to duties, work, or occupation, profession, or if you're unable to go to your polling place because of illness or physical disability, the absentee ballot is the product that you're qualified for. In or any voter who's not qualified for, not eligible for an absentee ballot, is then eligible for a mail-in ballot. So for anyone else, a mail-in ballot would be the product that would be appropriate for their situation. I think the most important part of not having that happen is that the poll books that our poll workers receive showing who is eligible to vote need to now be current as of Tuesday at 5 p.m. at the close of mail-in and absent regular civilian absentee application deadline. Poll books need to show everybody who has applied for either an absentee ballot or for a mail-in ballot because those folks are no longer eligible to vote a regular ballot at the polling place. And so as long as the poll books are current uh, and correct, and ours will be, uh, we've needed to choose a new poll book vendor, our former poll book vendor that printed for us in many Pennsylvania counties about two, almost three weeks ago tomorrow, three weeks ago tomorrow, quit the poll book printing business for Pennsylvania. Uh, they said we simply can't comply with those types of de uh, deadlines. So at this point, our poll books will be printed in Harrisburg, PA, closer to home, uh, and they will be uh, complete as of 5 o'clock Tuesday before the election, and they'll be delivered to us by Friday morning. Uh, but I think it's imperative, I believe it's imperative to maintain election security that the County Board of Elections provide poll books that are to their poll workers that are current, um, that clearly show which voters are not eligible to vote a regular ballot uh, on election day. Because once you have been issued either an absentee ballot or a mail-in ballot, you are no longer eligible to vote a regular ballot at the polling place. If you ha the only thing you would get at a polling place would be a provisional ballot because voters have up until 8 o'clock election night to return the mail ballot or the absentee and so obviously they'd be at a polling place prior to that earlier in the day uh, and so the fact that the voter did not return it uh, was issued the mail ballot and 
we have no record of them returning it, they only get a provisional until we determine, and that provisional won't be counted, until we determine whether or not they return their absentee or mail ballot. For a voter who's already returned the absentee or mail ballot to us, they are not eligible to vote at all at a polling place. Act 77 does not allow the counties to do anything with the absentee and mail ballots received besides hold them um, until eight after polls close on election night. And then the county may begin canvassing them after 8 p.m. and must begin by the third day following the election to begin canvassing them. And that'll be a matter of reading out the names of each uh, voter whose ballot is in hand, having an opportunity for someone, a watcher, candidate, or attorney for a candidate to object to that or challenge that ballot from being counted um, and post the $10 fee that is required under the law. The process must then be completed by the eighth day. We anticipate that we will have tens of thousands of absentees and mail ballots to Canvas. We already work until about midnight election night to get the results posted from each of our polling places. We anticipate we will begin on Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. to begin that canvassing of absentee ballots. Um, it would be ideal, and I think our voters are going to be displeased with the delay in having complete or essentially complete Pennsylvania results with the volume of expected absentee and mail ballots. Um, I believe voters would prefer if that process was moved up so that the county could release those totals when polls close instead of only beginning that lengthy and time-consuming process of canvassing mail ballots um, after in the days, hours and days after the election. Well, I, I, the, the processing of the requests, the issuing of the ballots is going to be a more time consuming process than the canvassing of the ballots. The issuing of these ballots will go on for weeks. The canvassing of these ballots will simply go on for days. Uh, but we, in, we anticipate the let me start over. The County Board of Elections last year approved, after the passage of Act 77, approved the purchase of additional, of a second high-speed scanner and of a second uh, station to adjudicate these ballots. Uh, the scanning of the ballots is not the slow part. The opening of the ballots, the reading the names, the opening of the multiple envelopes, and the adjudicating after scanning, and that's accounting for undervotes or overvotes, are the time-consuming part of the process. The scanner speed is not the limiting factor. Uh, but we begin, we imagine, I imagine we will begin uh, working on Wednesday morning at 9 if the law doesn't change, um, and that we'll work normal days until we're done. Uh, we have eight days to be completed under the election code, and I uh, cannot, I, I, we will follow the law, and we will certainly meet our requirements. In regard to the fulfillment side of it, the issuing side of it, uh, we are anticipating we have requested additional equipment uh, from the Pennsylvania Department of State. Sure, the statewide uniform registry of electors is what all Pennsylvania counties use to process absentee and uh, mail ballot applications, and we have requested additional SURE workstations from the Pennsylvania Department of State. Uh, we've been told we will get them. Uh, the county commissioners have provided us with additional uh, office space here in the building to have staff processing, primarily temporary staff, but have staff pr processing those applications, and we believe that the primary will go very smoothly. We have made preparations um, in for what we believe is a worst possible scenario, and uh, because once you realize you're getting snowed under, it's too too late to begin making plans for uh, fixing the solution. So we have additional equipment requested, uh, we have additional space set aside, and we've had conversations uh, in regard to additional staffing to uh, process those applications, both uh, county employees and the temporary employees to uh, get that done. Uh, and we will, we will get that done. Depending what we see for the volume in the primary election, the county may need to look at using an outside mail fulfillment center for the November election in order to be able to process the volume of ballots that will be required. Um, we know that we can easily process, I won't say easily, but we can successfully process, uh, we work hard to do it, uh, successfully process probably up to 20,000 uh, ballots ballots in the square footage and with the workstations we currently have. Normally in a presidential primary we'll get about 4,500 or so absentee ballots. That gives us a leeway of additional 15,000 that we know we have the capability to process 
in our existing footprint based upon what we've done before in presidential elections. In addition to that, we have requested the additional equipment and we have set aside additional space in the building to do it. Um, but if those numbers, for example, become 70,000 for November, like the Department of State has suggested the county should prepare for, 20% of their voters uh, requesting a mail ballot, if the number is 70,000 uh, and I have another 15,000 absentee ballots on top of it, that is going to be a higher number than what we have the wherewithal to process in a individual um, single application by application um, uh, labor intensive process. And so if we get to those volumes, the county is going to need to look at some options, including potentially having an outside mail fulfillment center um, mail out the ballots once we've processed the applications. But we're not there yet, uh, but we are looking at all sorts of contingency plans uh, because our, we need to make this be successful. It's hard to know because I, I don't know the volume of mail ballots uh, that we will be sending out. I can tell you all of the absentee, all of the mail ballot envelopes are all being printed right now. Uh, so we're spending um, probably about $8,000 in just envelope printing expense. Each of these ballots that get, out, get sent out uh, will cost us 50 cents in postage. Each, each of these ballots that get sent out will cost us about 25 cents for the ballot stock, for the ballot that goes out with them. Uh, and so then there's the labor cost in addition to it. Without knowing the volume, it's very hard to guess. I can tell you that our department's budget was submitted uh, and our numbers were submitted well before Act 77 uh, was ever passed. Um, the commissioners have been very um, supportive. They recognize the situation we're in and we simply need to make this happen. Uh, and I'm convinced we have the support we need to uh, see that be the case. But I can't, I, without knowing what the numbers are going to be, it, it, throwing, throwing a substantial change like this at counties in a presidential election year creates a huge unknown. Uh, I know, you know we, we budgeted for what we anticipated would be the volume in a presidential election year, the temporary employee, the temporary staffing needed to do it, the extra postage needed to mail it out, the extra printing cost. Uh, but some of these changes are simply, uh, we're simply Simply not prepared for. Um, the one change from Act 77 we did uh, get it, were able to get added into our budget because it was a nice known quantity is under Act 77 we are now able to pay our judges of election for picking up their supplies from us on the Saturday before the election. And so we've added an additional $20 in for each election um, and that was added into our budget and approved by the Board of Elections so we're now able to pay our judges of election an additional of sum of money for picking up their supplies for us. Before we weren't, they were only be able, we were only legally able to pay them for returning the returns on election night. So now we can pay them for the trip in to pick them up as well. But that, that's the only part we got budgeted. <laughs> Well, right. Previously, under the election code, we were required to send the absentee ballots out to the polling place. And the absentee ballots went out with the judge of elections on the Saturday before the election when they picked up their supplies. That was why the deadline was Friday at 5 p.m. The new deadline is now election day at 8 p.m. And with that uh, new deadline, uh, the ballots are no longer going to be canvassed out at the individual precinct. So basically what that looked like is a precinct was frequently canvassing opening up, reading the, reading the names, opening up, tossing the privacy envelopes into a central pile, shuffling the privacy envelopes, then opening up and scanning those ballots, and then returning all the signed outer envelopes to us, um, along with the voted ballots. That process generally took you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, um, you know, to do somewhere, you know, up to 100. Generally 100 was the most uh, absentee ballots a polling place would have in a presidential election. Uh, and so they were doing a couple dozen to a hundred absentee ballots uh, in a decentralized location. So now we, in addition to the absentees, you know, the 14,000 or 15,000, 16,000 absentees we might expect in a presidential election, which will all come to one location and be, need to be held here and canvassed here. In addition to that, we're now looking to add, you know, 20,000 to you know, 70,000 mail ballots on top of that. Um, and so A, the volume has grown and B, the task isn't being split up between 240 locations anymore, 240 crews, it's being done here by probably three or four crews. And so it will just the very the math of it, it will take longer. Um, looking at numbers from Michigan, and we've not done it centrally before. Looking at numbers from Michigan, uh, most of them believe, uh, some numbers I saw were that they could do about a team of two people could do uh, 200 to 250 an hour.
Well, right, they cannot take it to a polling place. So the fact that they were issued an, absence, an absentee or a mail-in ballot, they are going to show up at the polling place as absentee or mail-in issued, issue provisional. So they're not going to get a regular ballot at the polling place. They would only get a provisional ballot at the polling place. And that ballot would not be counted election night. That ballot would not be counted until after we determined that we have accounted for all of the absentee or mail-in ballots submitted and that this person did not submit their absentee or mail-in ballot. And then their provisional would be eligible to be counted. Um, I think their better course of action is to simply run that ballot in, even let's say they forgot to mail it and it's election day, um, you know, at 5 in the evening they get home from work at 5.30 and realize they never mailed in their absentee or their mail-in ballot. They're able to simply bring that ballot in to the County Board of Elections here at 150 North Queen Street and bring it in to us up until 8 p.m. election night. But they cannot turn that ballot in to a local election board. If they show up at their polling place, all they're going to get is a provisional ballot and it won't be counted until after we have accounted for all absentee and mail-in ballots and determined that they did not return the absentee or the mail-in that they were initially issued. Generally, uh, our goal, and we didn't always meet our goal because we we're reliant upon poll workers bringing back the returns, but our goal was to have uh, post have our election results complete by 11 o'clock election night for the 11 o'clock news. That was, that's been our goal. We didn't always meet that. We usually, sometimes we have 95%, 98% in, but our goal was, and we, but we always had them in before midnight. Uh, and those uh, resu unofficial results are posted. And there was very few additional ballots to be added. Uh, the only things that would be added to that after the fact uh, were any provisional ballots that were eligible to be counted that we would uh, count during the counting canvas, any absentees that were erroneously not scanned at the polling place that would be returned to us in the voted not scanned envelope. It'd be very small numbers, but if the poll workers closed down the scanner before they forgot to send the, scan their absentees, they would send them in to us. And all the overseas and military voter ballots that only have to be postmarked before the election and need to be back in our hands. Um, by the week after. Um, so those would be what was added to the totals as we would go through, and these are very small numbers. Uh, they were counted, they were added to the official results, but the official results and the unofficial results were not substantially different. Based upon what the Department of State has thrown out as numbers counties should prepare for, we are historically we have about 5% of our voters who vote via absentee. And absentee ballots were counted, 99% of them were counted on election night and part of those unofficial returns. Now that 5% won't be part of the election night returns. Additionally, any volume of mail-in ballots, which we haven't seen yet, we don't know what that volume will be, but the guesses are from, you know, 20,000 to 70,000 in Lancaster County, which would be 20% of our voters. And so if you have 70,000, just to use the high number, mail-in ballots that are uncounted, 20 percent plus 5% of the absentee ballots remaining uncounted election night, you have a quarter, the two together, you have a quarter of your vote that hasn't been reported election night. And the, that will create a situation, I expect, where Pennsylvania to, could be too close to call for days until those numbers are read into the system. I would much prefer, but we're not legally allowed to, I would much prefer to have those uh, absentee and mail-in ballots canvassed ahead of time and those results released as the first result election night, which is what states such as Arizona, who have had permanent mail-in ballots uh, for years have done. Just as a fun little example, I was talking to Penal County, Arizona, which is a little bit smaller than we are in preparation for how they've d handled mail-in ballots. They've had permanent mail-in ballots now, I believe since 2007, if I recall the year they said that started. And at this point, 68% of their voters are on a permanent mail-in ballot list. This will change the way elections look in Pennsylvania. Um, and it's going to continue to grow. This is not going, this election, presidential election will not be the high watermark for mail-in ballots. The numbers will continue to grow as voters avail themselves of the convenience that they offer. 
That being said, it, as it grows, it becomes even more imperative that we are able to canvas these results and release them at 8 o'clock election night after polls close, like county, like states that have done this for years, such as Arizona have done. Uh, actually, statewide, it's my understanding that their uh, mail-in ballot numbers are even higher than the 68% number, uh, but that was that one particular county I was in conversation with. Uh, but yeah, we it, it, provide, it creates a convenience for the voters, and I certainly can appreciate that. Um, I don't believe the voters are going to find the delay in getting results, um, which is forced by not having us be able to canvas those um, results until after 8 o'clock election night. I don't believe voters are going to find that to be palatable long term, and I believe our legislators will get pressure to make that change more consistent with what other jurisdictions are doing and allow those to be canvassed in an orderly manner ahead of time. The other change from Act 77, which you and I have not talked about at all today, which is also kind of a big deal for voters, is the voter registration deadline in Pennsylvania. Voter registration deadline used to be 30 days before the election, and the requirement was that your registration was either in our hands or postmarked 30 days prior to the election in order to be registered for that election. Act 77 reduced that to 15 days, but postmarks no longer count. So it has to be in our hands 15 days prior to the election, so the voters have another 15 days to register. I would encourage voters not to wait till the deadline um, and to you know, make their changes of registration you know, sooner rather than later. They can do that online at uh, register.votespa.com or they can do it by printing up an application off of our website uh, at co.lancaster.pa.us slash elections and uh, sign it, print it, sign it, and mail it in to us to get their registration um, changed, updated, uh, party changes, address changes, name changes, um, all of that taken care of well in advance so that they have their voter registration card well before the deadline and they know that they are registered and that they know where the polling location is.